how has the direction to shelter in place affected circuit overseers, construction servants, field missionaries, and special pioneers? How have they been able to continue in their ministry, serving Jehovah whole soul and with joy? What practical lessons have they learned? To follow the governing body's direction to shelter in place, we couldn't go in to see Steve's mother. She was in aged care, just 10 minutes away from where we're based. She died whilst we were sheltering in place. This led to another challenge, grieving in isolation. At the beginning of the shelter in place direction, I had a very difficult time. Uh, I had uh, flashbacks that were very difficult for me. During uh, the Vietnam War, I was imprisoned because of taking a neutral stand. I had a reaction to this lockdown of being confined. Fear of isolation is the biggest challenge for me. My lovely husband that I've been working with, with for years, helping build places of worship for Jehovah, was diagnosed of cancer and died after five months. We especially discerned the value of the direction in November 2020, when suddenly I was taken to the hospital because of a serious heart disease and severe pneumonia. It turned out that my life was in danger. The doctors evaluated that if I had contracted the coronavirus in that condition, I would not have had a chance to survive it. We're watching a video segment that's being shown about halfway through the 2021 annual meeting, which was on October 2nd, 2021. This video segment is praising the organization for its shelter in place program, which was applied to special full-time servants. So a special full-time servant is someone like a missionary or a circuit overseer or a special pioneer someone who reports directly to the organization. Whereas the vast majority of Jehovah's Witnesses fall under the authority and control of a congregation or a body of elders of a congregation, there are certain witnesses, including Bethelites, who report to the branch office. And this includes circuit overseers, special pioneers, missionaries. And what we're being asked to do is essentially believe that the shelter-in-place direction, basically social distancing direction that was given to people in this role, is evidence that Jehovah was backing the organization. And so far, I'm just not seeing it. I'm seeing some sad stories. I'm seeing some tragic stories. But sadness and tragedy affects everybody whether you're a Jehovah's Witness or not, and you've got to deal with it. I'm not seeing anything at all so far. Spoiler alert, there won't be anything in the rest of it either. But we're not seeing anything in this segment that points to the organization as having a unique grip on the pandemic. Being able to not meet an hour requirement, but go ahead and be very busy spiritually. And so we did a phenomenal amount of shepherding, strengthening, upbuilding our brothers and sisters, folks literally from around the world that we knew needed help. When the governing body removed the specific hour requirement, uh, I, I felt, I think we felt, their trust. That gave us more flexibility. And this enabled us to reach out to relatives not in the truth and to support them during the pandemic. And that has led to two regular, continuing Bible studies. I really feel how much the governing body cares for us every time they mention in their letters that they do not require us to reach the required hours. Many brothers and sisters today are depressed and experiencing pandemic fatigue. Usually, they need someone who they can talk to about their problems. And because of these adjustments, 
I now have more time to encourage them and help them to remain spiritually strong. This was a weird one. What we've just heard is about a minute or so of Jehovah's Witnesses who are special full-time servants, again, circuit overseers, special pioneers, etc., talking about how they're really glad they don't have an hour requirement. And this is something that you probably don't know if you've never been one of Jehovah's Witnesses, you're just curious. Jehovah's Witnesses who commit to doing pioneering, whether it's as a regular pioneer or as an auxiliary pioneer or as a special pioneer, special pioneers have a lot of hours to do. I think circuit overseers have a, an hour requirement as well. You commit to doing a set amount of hours per month. When I was a regular pioneer, it was 70 hours per month and it was 50 for auxiliary pioneers. I think that's still the case. In some instances, for auxiliary pioneers, it drops down to 30 hours per month. I think when there's a circuit overseer visit. For special pioneers, it's something insane, like 100 or so hours per month. I'd have to check. 90 to 100 hours per month. It will be on the screen, if Tibor is gracious, what the special pioneer hour requirement is. So <laughs> this has always been a weird element of the Jehovah's Witness religion. How do you justify this? How do you justify Christian worship, an act of Christian worship, being calculated and measured in hours? Is that really biblical? Is that something the Bible writers, Jesus, the apostles, would have had in mind? Oh, in the last days there's going to be a preaching work like never before, and we'll measure it <laughs> by timing how many hours people are doing. It's always been weird. It always niggled when I was a Jehovah's Witness. Of course, you go along with it because what alternative is there? And what's really interesting is when it gets dropped during a pandemic, all of a sudden they're talking about it as though, what a relief. When the governing body removed the specific hour requirement, uh, I, I felt, I think we felt, their trust. Does that mean you didn't feel their trust before? How are we supposed to interpret these words? They seem to be suggesting that the hour requirement is a bad thing. Well, what's going to happen when the hour requirement is reinstated? Maybe it already has been reinstated. I don't know. <laughs> but what then? It's such a telling part of this particular video segment. I'm frankly surprised they included it. I know why they've included it. It's because they want to make the governing body look really merciful and loving and understanding. But again, there'll be many Jehovah's Witnesses watching this, including many pioneers and many in full-time service, who will be thinking deep down, you know what? I really wouldn't complain if we got rid of our requirements completely. Our Christian life is compared to a race, and this is not a short race. There are unexpected things that can happen to us. By striving to obey from the heart now, we can be prepared to obey the directions that we are going to receive in the Great Tribulation. We are sure this is not the last time we have to be obedient. We see Bible prophecies being fulfilled right in front of our eyes, and ahead of us are even greater events that will bring larger trials. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3 helps us, despite trials, to keep joy, deep joy in our hearts, and it ensures us that all difficult situations will help us to work on endurance. And this quality will help to cope with trials to come. I personally have benefited from following the governing body's direction. I've actually felt joy every day. And I can only put that down to the blessing from Jehovah God on our efforts to be obedient 
we both benefited from the direction from the governing body because we trust they are the faithful and discreet slave Christ. Jesus is directing them. I am so absolutely grateful to the governing body for providing direction that is blessing every single one of us around the earth. Just like you, these dear ones have made great sacrifices to continue serving Jehovah whole soul during this pandemic. And no doubt we've all learned the value of applying the words of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word, be at it urgently, in favorable times and difficult times. For certainty, neither this pandemic nor any other difficult times to come will stop our preaching work and more importantly, prevent Jehovah's loving care. We certainly express our love and appreciation to all of our special full-time servants in the field for the excellent example they've set in following direction. Yes, following direction. Isn't that what it's all about? Gosh. So thus ends the segment on special full-time servants and how they've apparently been richly blessed by following the direction to shelter in place in their various assignments. And really, all we've heard in those last few comments is, number one, just unabashed praising of the governing body, and number two, a repeated emphasis on obedience. By striving to obey from the heart now, we can be prepared to obey the directions that we are going to receive in the Great Tribulation. We are sure this is not the last time we have to be obedient. I've actually felt joy every day, and I can only put that down to the blessing from Jehovah God on our efforts to be obedient. Obedience, obedience, obedience. That's apparently what it's all about. You just have to accept the control and authority of the governing body. That's apparently the only way that you're going to navigate your way through a pandemic. Isn't that the message of pretty much the entire annual meeting? And isn't the annual meeting in and of itself just a massive rally for worshipping, worshipping the eight dudes on the governing body. I'm sorry, that's what we've just been seeing. Bear in mind, this segment on special full-time servants has been arranged for by the teaching committee of the governing body. This is everything that we've seen on this annual meeting is all they're doing. And here they are arranging for special full-time servants from around the world to praise them publicly, to give them thanks and appreciation. How culty. And if you take your belief seriously as a Jehovah's Witness, how blasphemous. Isn't this the sort of thing that Moses got in trouble for, if you think about it? When the Israelites were about to arrive at the Promised Land, wasn't Moses sort of taken out of the equation because he attributed certain things to his own doing. He exhibited pride. He wanted the attention. He wanted the praise. Well, what are we seeing here? What have we seen in this entire annual meeting program? Just video after video, talk after talk, where the governing body are essentially praising themselves. Thank you. 